The Demon Prince, once mortal, now a champion of chaos, is the player's customizable avatar in Warhammer 3. By collecting glory, we'll harness the best aspects of each of the chaos gods and unleash their destructive power on an unsuspecting world. It's only fitting for the Demon Prince to aim for a domination victory, so we'll be focusing our wrath on these factions. We're 20 turns in and well situated already. We've consolidated our power in Hellspire Mountains, Trollheim Mountains and Icetooth Mountains and maintain a friendly attitude with the neighboring Bjornling Norska tribe. During our conquest so far, we've amassed a pool of glory, focusing primarily on Khorne as our patron god for the time being. As we amass glory, we unlock new limbs and weapons for our demon prince and stronger units to take into battle. There are billions of combinations to choose from, but our demon prince is built as a melee beast with a handful of devastating spells at his disposal. Here, on the frozen shores of the Trollheim Mountains, our conquest begins in earnest. A Pyrrhic victory could be crippling on the outset of our invasion, so we'll fight the battle ourselves. We charge head on into the conflict, making as much progress into the settlement as we can, before Kostaltin and his reinforcements arrive. To buy us some time, we send our Chaos Furies and Flesh Hounds to head the reinforcements off while we arrange our defenses. Kostaltin and his Great Orthodoxy are swept from the face of Kislev. As a particular insult to the Kislevite Pantheon, we'll use Castle Alexandronov as our staging ground to launch our invasion of the Motherland, building a settlement in Nurgle's name on the castle's ruins. As we delve deeper into our campaign, the four gods attempt to earn our favor by showering us with gifts. Corn gives us bloodletting, which provides boons for continuous slaughter. The more battles won in a turn, the higher the bloodletting. But if the blood stops flowing, we suffer penalties to our growth and melee attack. Siege has given us the teleportation stance, which allows us to bypass blockades and gives immunity to most attrition. However, we must have a Wind of Magic Reserve of 40 to use this gift, and cannot have moved in our current turn. Nurgle's gift is Switchable Plagues. Each foul contagion comes with their own benefits and drawbacks. We'll be selecting Grey Fever for the Vanguard deployment. And Slanesh's gift is that of Seduction. When facing off against an enemy in the moments before battle, we can employ Slanesh's charms to seduce a unit of the opposing army. The Bewitched unit will fight for us in the coming conflict. Each unit has a different seduction cost that, at this stage in the campaign, cannot exceed 2,000 favor. We'll be using these gifts to our tactical advantage as we march ever closer to Prague. The Tsarina appears weakened, perhaps by wars already hard fought. The perfect time to end her reign. The cursed city is accustomed to chaos sieges, but we mean to conquer it once and for all. A two-pronged attack with continuous artillery fire is enough to get us past the formidable walls. We take two quick victory points, forcing the Ice Queen's defenders to fall back and leaving our second invasion point with less resistance. With the pressure mounting and more victory points falling, the Tsarina enters the fray herself, but is soon overwhelmed. Ice Queen melts beneath the onslaught of the Demon Prince, and Prague's fall is all but assured. 
to destroy the last of the Defender's morale, we call upon the Sword of Corn and shatter any remaining morsel of hope. The shield has crumbled, and the rest of the mortal world is ripe for the taking. Chaos lives here. We'll raise a second army, recruiting from a pool of Blood Reapers, Plague Ridden, Alluresses and Iridescent Horrors to both protect our new lands and to squash the ever-arrogant Empire of Man in the South. For our Demon Prince, a new threat emerges. Temporary rifts into the Chaos Realms have opened and fresh spoils lay beyond them. What's more, we can use these rifts to traverse the world in an instant. We'll use them to demolish our demon rivals, but first, we'll enter the realm of the Sorcerer to claim the soul of Sinch's prized Demon Prince. We must navigate this twisted maze through portals, unveiling the path forward one battle at a time until we arrive at Sinch's champion. The maze confuses, ensnares, and dements. But neither trick nor scheme can keep our demon prince from his prize. At the foot of Sinch's impossible fortress, we come face to face with waves of demons. Our task is to capture three victory points, amass supplies to build our defenses, and survive. Sinch realizes our advance cannot be halted, he unleashes his prized champion. Prized champion or not, Sinch's forces prove to be no match for our demon prince. Once we've collected a soul from each of the Chaos Gods, we'll be nigh unstoppable. For now, though, we'll return to the mortal world, rebuild our army, and use the rifts to transport ourselves to Bloodfire Falls. Scarbrand wasn't expecting an invasion at the heart of his territory, but despite our surprise attack, the exiled Bloodthirster rallies a formidable defense. But not formidable enough. Despite the loss of his champion, Korn will no doubt elate at the flowing of fresh blood. The Exiles of Korn are conquered, and we set our sights on the Seducers of Slaanesh next. The Rift Seal, but they were invaluable to our cause whilst they lasted. They'll open again in another 30 turns, when we can again venture back into the Realm of Chaos and claim more souls. The Palace of Ruin is where Nakari makes their stand. They, too, fall to Chaos Undivided. Kugath and his foul poxmakers are miles away, but not too far to escape the reach of our magics. The Brewmaster is cornered in his sunken sewer. No plague or contagion can save him from the blue fires of Sinch's wrath. The Poxmakers of Nurgle spread their last plague, and of the ruinous champions, only Kairos Fateweaver and his oracles of Sinch remain.
Well prepared and entrenched behind the Valari's walls, Kairos Fateweaver lays heavy fire as we approach. The Changer's servant is a formidable wizard, but not so challenging a warrior. Up close, he proves fragile in the face of the Demon Prince. Our glorious conquest has taken us far from our humble beginnings and seen us prove our formidable might against the Chaos God's slaughtered champions. No one god has managed to tempt us, and so we refuse to be anyone's servant. We shall remain undivided as we turn our ire on Grand Cathay. We'll secure the Red Wastes and raise a second army before bringing both to the Great Bastion's Turtle Gate. Cathay's wall is infamously deadly to demon kind, so we entrench and commit to a lengthy siege. After a few turns, attrition has weakened the defenders and the odds are stacked in our favor. The wall crumbles. Grand Cathay's destruction begins. Our second army holds the gate whilst the demon prince pillages. Settlement by settlement, Grand Cathay turns to ruin and corruption, whilst our army grows as more powerful demons are drawn to our cause. To hasten Cathay's fall, we break our attack into three fronts. We pull our auxiliary force from the wall and unleash it on the Riverlands. Meanwhile, our Kislev army comes through the Mountains of Morn to apply pressure to Zhao Ming's territories, whilst our main force continues along the Bastion. One settlement remains in the northern provinces, but it will be the most challenging battle we've yet faced. Miao Ying the Storm Dragon means to stand against the Legion of Chaos despite the burning of her country, and so we march on Nangao. To spread Nangao's defenders out, we split our forces into four groups, focusing heavily on the western and southern fronts. Our great unclean one and his minotaurs are the first to breach the city gates, but are by no means the last. Attrition has weakened Nangao's defenders, and the spreading of our forces has made the outer walls a minor obstacle. We waste no time in advancing to the victory points, but are met with heavy resistance on all sides, and worse, Miao Ying's reinforcements. The bulk of the fighting is consolidated in the heart of the city, where Miao Ying makes use of barricades and towers. Whilst we commit the bulk of our forces to this central war zone, we skirt the edges of the conflict with a small force dedicated to capturing lesser defended victory points. The Storm Dragon, having routed our eastern invaders, moves to join the larger melee. Miao Ying's battle prowess is fierce, and she wades through whatever force we throw at her with ease. If she's not stopped here, we risk losing the heart of the city, so we employ the Demon Prince to head her off. Her defense was admirable, but ultimately futile. The Storm Dragon's life is snuffed out, and only the Demon Prince remains. Kislev, the Empire, Grand Cathay, the Ogres, and even our fellow demons. None could stand against Chaos Undivided. We took the gods' boons, used them to bring the world to its knees, and denied the ruinous powers control over us. And now, having conquered the mortal plane and three of the Chaos Gods' fiefdoms, there's one last soul to collect. Then we can prove ourselves to be the one true Demon Prince.